Hi guys, this is going to be a video on how to uh, resist the urge to hoard cameras. And the short answer is to have the cameras that you have serviced, uh, or at least the ones that you really like. You have to make value decisions here, and I'll give you some examples of, of what I went through in my own collection uh, to do that. These first two cameras are ones that uh, my grandpa ha either had. This is his old Electro 35 GS. And this is my Roly 35. He had a B35. I had one of those for a while, but uh, not quite the same quality. So I'll start with why I did that. So this was my grandpa's first good camera. He bought this in about 1966. And um, it's just a camera like this, when it gets to be 50, 60 years old, they're just never quite right unless you, unless they've been serviced. Things deteriorate, like the foam seals and, uh, in this case, the pad of death. So, I decided this one is a family heirloom. It was worth having serviced. I replaced this front ring, which was dented. But I have I found that I really enjoy the cameras a lot more. The ones that I really want to keep, I enjoy them a lot more once I've had them serviced. So rather than just going on eBay and uh, always buying the next camera, I just only try to get the ones that I really like these days and um, and then have them serviced. So this is one example, the Electro 35. I had this serviced. It was 150 bucks. you know, every... 50 or 60 years, that's a reasonable expense, or whatever that turns out to cost 60 years from now. And then another one that I had serviced was this, uh, the Roly, the Roly 35. And this has always been one of my favorites. I've, you know, as I mentioned earlier, my grandpa had a B35. I thought it was great. Uh, when he traded it away when I was a kid, I was really sad. So it was only a matter of time until I got one as an adult. But I found after having a couple of them that they're never quite right unless they've been serviced. Um, these these are small cameras so they get dropped and um, you know things gum up the oils either migrate or they dry up over time. So I decided I liked the camera enough that it was worth having it serviced. My particular one uh, had taken a hit to the front and so the, the smallest and the largest apertures wouldn't work. I had to kind of force them, and that's always a bad thing. So I had this CL8, and man, I love this camera now. I use it a lot more than I ever did before when there was something wrong with it. So those are just two examples on, on favorites of mine that I considered worth it. And I am as bad as anybody, though, when it comes to acquiring things that are... Um, the deal is just too good to be true, so I'll give you a few examples of that, too. Here's a, a Nikon FG, and I thought everything was, was good with it. I had checked everything, and then I sold it to someone on eBay. Um, actually, no, not eBay. It was a Facebook group. It was a Negative Positives Facebook group. And he noticed that some of the shutter speeds, the manual shutter speeds, didn't work right. So, I don't know if I'm going to have this one serviced, because you can get these all day long for 30 bucks, and it would cost more than 30 bucks to have it serviced. It's really clean. It doesn't really need any cleaning. It just needs something fixed with the circuitry. So, I'll have to decide. Maybe I'll just donate that to my camera smith. Um, he can have it as a parts camera. It's a shame, because it's a nice little camera. It's uh, compact and lightweight, and it's just you know, fully featured, and so I'll have to think about that. Is it worth it? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe I should part it out. Maybe it's just not destined for the collection anymore. I should decide what to do with it, though, instead of just having it sitting around in my closet. This one, I wanted one of these for a while. I had an FM2 back in the day, and an FM before that. I liked them both, but they're not exactly spontaneous shooters. So when you go to an FE or an FE2 and you get the aperture priority mode, then you, they can be a lot more spontaneous. You're shooting outdoors with your family or whatever, and you see, you know, it's a bright day or whatever. Okay, I'm just going to set it to F11 and, uh, and let it ride. All you have to do is focus and shoot. 
almost like a point and shoot camera. But anyway, the problem with this one is um, I bought this from Used Photo Pro online, Robert's Camera. And um, they have a warranty, so I paid a little bit extra instead of just gambling on one from a private party who couldn't make any guarantees about the condition. But everything seemed to work fine, except uh, the rewind button had to be held in. So I sent it back to Roberts. I cashed in on their warranty, and uh, they fixed it. And now I got it back, and I realized the one-second manual shutter speed doesn't seem to work right. It's way longer than a second. The rest of them sound about right. So is this worth something? Is this worth having CLA'd? I think I probably will get this one CLA'd because this is my, my favorite manual focus Nikon body. I'll probably never manually use that one second um, setting. You know, I probably would leave it in auto and, and uh, dial in some exposure compensation. But, I don't know, it just bugs me. And I like the camera enough, I use the camera enough that it probably would be worth having a CLA for 150 bucks and instead of spending 150 bucks on another camera that's going to duplicate something I've already got. So that one is in the pile that I'm actually going to have it done. Here's another example of one that I probably won't have serviced. This is a Nickermat FTN and the problem with it is I lost the battery door. There was some issue where it, it wouldn't stay in. You know, the light meter worked okay, but the battery, I couldn't get the battery cover to, to screw in properly and stay. So I thought I had it one time. I was out shooting pictures in the cemetery, and then I came back, and the battery and the cover are gone. And I was like, well, you know, I paid 30 or 35 bucks for this. Um, they don't seem to be super collectible or desirable. People don't like the shutter speed around the, the lens mount. But it's a great camera otherwise. And I have a buddy uh, who's bugs me. He's like, you know what, don't worry about that light metering stuff all the time. That You can just do Sunny 16 and, and I realized, yeah, you know what, I should get some practice with Sunny 16 and the films that I shoot have enough latitude where if I'm off by a stop it doesn't really matter. So Instead of having this service for 150 bucks, I bought a, a Minolta light meter and, and made a Sunny 16 card. So I'm, this is going to be my Sunny 16 camera. Not going to spend the money to get this one fixed, but I'm also, it's not one that I'm going to get rid of because it needs, it needs something. People always, some people complain about this on this camera this thing where if you pull the, the wind lever out then the meter's on and you push it in and it's off and I don't even want to deal with that so great camera just this is going to be a Sunny 16 camera it goes in the not service pile Olympus OM1N this was my uh, grandpa's camera and it still works everything is in good conditions except the light seals you can see the the mirror uh, the mirror bumper is gone so I need to at least do that, and it's getting to the point where the seals in the back here have completely deteriorated away. That's something I can do myself, but this camera has been exercised regularly since it was bought in 1979 or so. So it doesn't really need anything mechanically. It just needs a little TLC, and I've got the, uh, I've got the seal kit already. So, why not? This, I'm going to service that, but I'll, I'll do that one myself. So, so these two, this is just an example of how I did it with my collection, but these two, the FE2 and the OM1N, are in the have serviced pile. And then I've got the, the FG and the Nickermat FTN in the don't have serviced pile. And the Yashica Electro 35 GS and the Roll I 35. I've had them serviced and I enjoy them so much more now that they're serviced and everything is right. So, this is just kind of how I went through my value decisions, and I would recommend that everybody do this because you'll find that uh, you, you'll end up with fewer cameras because you decide to get rid of some or, you know, just keep some just to play with or 
as parts cameras or maybe donate them to your camera repair guy as a parts camera. You'll end up with fewer cameras, but when you have to make that value decision, do I spend 150 bucks to have them serviced, then then you really you find out what you really like. So, just a little kind of a preachy post, but a recommendation on how to get a little more joy out of your camera collection without spending a bunch of money. Thanks for watching. See you next time.